The amount of ATP stored in a skeletal muscle cell can only provide muscular activity for two to three seconds. To continue activity beyond a few seconds, muscle cells must be able to generate additional molecules of ATP. Muscle cells can synthesize ATP from the following sources, creatine phosphate and either anaerobic or aerobic cellular respiration. The duration of muscular activity determines which energy source is used. In a process that is unique to muscle cells, creatine phosphate donates its phosphate to convert ADP to ATP. One creatine phosphate molecule generates one ATP molecule. The phosphagen system can generate enough ATP to sustain maximum muscle contraction for about 15 seconds. During periods of muscle inactivity, creatine is again phosphorylated, and the muscle's creatine phosphate stores are replenished. The muscle is now ready for another burst of activity. When muscular activity extends beyond 15 seconds, creatine phosphate is depleted. The muscles need a new source of energy, glucose. Muscle cells obtain glucose from the blood via diffusion or by the breakdown of stored glycogen either from the liver or the skeletal muscle. In a series of reactions called glycolysis, glucose is broken down to pyruvic acid molecules. The reactions which convert glucose to pyruvic acid use two ATP molecules but produce four for a net gain of two. Normally, during aerobic respiration, pyruvic acid is oxidized in the mitochondria during aerobic respiration, producing large amounts of ATP. However, during some activities, not enough oxygen is available to completely break down the pyruvic acid. In such cases, the muscle converts it to lactic acid. Most of the lactic acid diffuses into the blood. The liver then converts some of it back to glucose. With these processes, anaerobic cellular respiration can produce enough ATP to sustain maximum muscle activity for about 30 to 40 seconds. To sustain muscle activity for minutes or hours, muscle cells require a continuous supply of ATP. Aerobic cellular respiration, a series of reactions that require nutrients and oxygen, can provide such a supply. The reactions utilize the breakdown of pyruvic acid and other carbohydrates, proteins, and fatty acids. The result is water, carbon dioxide, and a great amount of ATP. One glucose molecule can generate a net yield of about 36 ATP molecules. Aerobic cellular respiration is able to produce enough ATP to sustain maximum muscle activity for hours.